What you mean Kanad took the stash? And he's still walking around? I'm gonna talk to him, Ma. Make sure this never happened again. Look at me, boy. Kanad got to feel some pain for what he did. He got to. I don't... You don't what, motherfucker? This how you pay me back for all the love I show? Shit. I've been kept you in Nike since you wearing diapers. I'm trying. You trying, huh? That's what you gonna tell your father the next time you see him? That you trying? Or you gonna tell him what you done? What he done got him locked up. That's right. We Bay walked in Jessup a man, and he gonna walk out one. But you out here, wearing his name, acting a bitch. Oh, look at you, crying now. Fuck you think you going? Get your ass back here. I ain't done talking to you. I consider The Wire to be one of the best shows of all time. Probably the best show since the advent of television. And I give it this rating because it is an unapologetic exploration of human nature. Now, I, I uploaded a clip of The Wire that I don't want to inc incorporate into this video because of all that copyright nonsense. But yeah, you know, I just want you to watch the video. It's in the description box before you actually listen to this one. And uh, the video depicts accurately, in my opinion, the dynamics of single motherhood that we find in matriarchal uh, settings, which is where The Wire takes place. Now, once again, one of the many reasons I consider this show to be a masterpiece is because it displays the catastrophic consequences that matriarchy exerts onto adolescent men. Now, the video depicts the character Delanda and her son Naaman discussing how Naaman intends to provide for her the mother, now that Naaman's father has received a life sentence in prison. Now, the psychology of the single mother being a derivative of the female psychology in general is on full display here, and it highlights a very important process by which the single mother subjects her male children to a process of what I like to call spousification. And this process places the adolescent male in the position of the stand-in husband with all the obligations and responsibilities that this implies. This psychology stems from the propensity for women to view children as resources that are linked to provision from the father. Now, in the event that the father is no longer able to produce wealth, the next best thing, granted the woman still seeks to procure financial stability, are the sons of the father. Male children in matriarchal upbringings where poverty is rampant become the de facto breadwinners, providers, and protectors to the mother, according to the mother. Now, it really is an extension of female thought patterns that view men through a filter of greed and usury, and so the adolescent male in the single mother household becomes both the husband and the possession of the single mother. This compels the single mother to continue a process of emasculation of the adolescent male that she feels she could never complete with his father, and since the mother, being an adult, has full control over whatever resources are coming into the home, via the everyman, you know, food stamps and welfare and other predominantly male-funded government subsidies, she can then wield this desire to own and mentally castrate her own male child with complete power and impunity. The adolescent boy, being the progeny of his father, will undoubtedly and specifically as he approaches manhood take on both physical and other heritable qualities of his father, and the single mom will actually build resentment to her son for this. And so she'll further her efforts to emasculate control and spousify him. Now, all this, of course, creates a profound riff in the adolescent male's development, and it can manifest in various ways within him. One being the adolescent male taking on the persona of hypermasculine bravado, a desperate mad dash to project as much pseudo-masculinity as possible. And I explain this further in the video titled Deconstructing PUA Frauds uh, in the link box. Now, in this scenario, the adolescent male develops an extreme distrust for other men because he fears that any strong male figure will betray him in the same way that his father has. But what isn't usually discussed is just how he feels that his father has betrayed him, the generic supposition being that feelings of abandonment cause him to feel betrayed. But the part that hurts him the most is the fact that he feels that his father didn't rescue him from the manipulations and attacks leveled against him by his own mother. The passage of time provides the male youth with more independence and physical strength as well as a desire to challenge authority, and the mother inevitably loses control and throws the rebellious son out onto the streets populated by other males that are just as wayward and confused as himself. 
along with all that unresolved male hostility and abandonment issues. And the result is violence, and lots of it. Now, are my claims nothing but psychological conjecture? Maybe. But the fact remains that young adolescent males in single mother households are more likely to commit crime and more likely to join gangs that they describe as their family and their brothers and are more likely to shoot and kill other men from other gangs. So we see amongst these adolescent males a need for brotherhood and male bonding as well as a need to attack men which they perceive as being hostile. We need to start asking ourselves to what degree is the absence of fathers causing this behavior as opposed to the degree that the presence of single mothers are causing it. That's right, the presence of single mothers. Let's start analyzing that for a change. Let's start asking ourselves why, wherever we see single motherhood, we see male-on-male -male violence, we see poverty, we see despair. Why should we be handing out WIC and food stamps and welfare to single mothers when everything points to them? being the problem and not the victims of it. We see our society with all its talk about a war on poverty and urban renewal and President Obama blaming the fathers on Father's Day nonetheless, all in hopes of hiding the fact that single mothers are the ones in direct control of male youth in the matriarchal setting. They are the heads of these so-called urban renewal projects. They are the ones raising these so-called deadbeat fathers it is them that have held a generation of young men under siege, and our society loves to label them thugs and criminals and warehouse them in jail cells like animals, but the truth is that single motherhood is the problem, not these men. These men, given the correct opportunities, would flourish, I assure you, but as long as single mothers are treated with empathy and sympathy and even praise in our society, you can expect to be treated to the pleasure of high crime and poverty rates with no solution in sight. That's all I got to say on a subject for now, but more to come.